What's going on, everyone? This is Nick here again at NJ's Bricks, and I'm here to talk to you about something that I am very passionate about. It is very near and dear to my heart, and that would be why this newest version of Captain Rex is infinitely better than this version of Captain Rex right here. Now, look, I know what you're saying. These are both Captain Rex minifigures. These are both the latest version of the Captain Rex minifigure. This one right here, however, is slightly newer, and for a very important reason, it is infinitely, infinitely better than this one right here. So let's take a look at these two minifigures. Let's go ahead and break it down. This one right here is newly released in 2024. It comes from set 75391, and that is the Captain Rex Y-Wing Microfighter. This set right here costs $12.99. It is a small poly bag, and it can be found at many major large box stores. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at this other Captain Rex minifigure over here. This is the old Captain Rex released all the way back in 2023. At the time of its release, this minifigure was exclusive to set 75367, the Venator class Republic Attack Cruiser. It comes in at $649.99, and it is a very large and very impressive model, including the exclusive at this time to the set Admiral Ularan. Now, these may seem like two very, very similar minifigure, but if you've been paying attention, you've probably figured out that the major difference between them is that this beautiful minifigure right here is going to come at a total of $12.99 if you wish to acquire the set that it comes along with, perhaps even less if you buy just the minifigure by itself on BrickLink. This minifigure right here comes in at a whopping $649.99. This was a controversial move by LEGO, and I understand why some fans are upset. It is printed right here in the instructions for the Venator that this minifigure is supposed to be exclusive to this set. And then the rumors started coming in. There were whispers, there were talks, a lot of people in the Facebook groups, a lot of people on YouTube were talking about how it was rumored that there would be a Captain Rex Y-Wing microfighter and that it would be containing the same minifigure that LEGO had claimed was exclusive to the expensive $650 Venator set. Then there were more rumors beyond that where people were speculating, well, maybe it won't include the cloth pauldron, maybe it won't have printed legs, maybe this, maybe that. Ultimately... A lot, a lot, a lot of copium from people who acquired the $650 Venator and did not want to see the cost of their investment go down because an exclusive minifigure was to be released in a poly bag, which would be less than $15. Turn the tables ahead to 2024. The leaks of the set come out. The official images come out. The set is released, and it is indeed the same exact minifigure that was released in the $650 Venator set the year prior, the one that LEGO stated right in their own instructions was exclusive to that set. Now, I will say that I understand people feeling duped. I understand that people feel like they were lied to. And in the aggregate, that is what happened. This was 100% an own goal on LEGO's part. They communicated after the fact that really they intended folks to understand it as this is the first appearance of this minifigure. But that is not what the term exclusive means. When you hear exclusive, you understand that to mean that it's not going to show up anywhere else, at least any time in the foreseeable future. When you hear that a video game is exclusive to the Xbox or to the PlayStation, that means you can't get it on the other console. Not that it's going to come out on the other console like two weeks later. And typically when things like that do happen, they'll say like, oh, this is a, an Xbox exclusive for the first year or later to be released on other consoles or something similar to that. But that's really not what LEGO did here. So I will off the cuff acknowledge that it is completely valid for people to feel like LEGO lied to them because in reality, they did. At the same time, I'm pretty much always going to laugh when people go out of their way to spend a ton of money to acquire Lego sets specifically for their own financial gain. At the end of the day, while this is a collectibles hobby to an extent, this is a toy that's meant to be enjoyed by 
hopefully as many people as possible. The cost of Lego is already through the roof for most families, especially when you start talking these really expensive sets. And personally, as someone who would like to be able to see kids enjoy these things, would like to see as many people as possible be able to enjoy the things that they like, I don't agree with Lego paywalling very cool minifigures behind these extremely expensive sets and then giving subpar or lesser versions of those minifigures and other sets, especially when the cost to them to make the much nicer version of the minifigure is very minimal. I come from a background in Magic the Gathering, and we see this sort of thing all the time, where a card will get really expensive because perhaps it was only released in a limited release product or a more expensive product that not as many people bought, or maybe it went under the radar for some reason. Then the card becomes scarce, the card becomes really expensive. Ultimately, eventually, those cards end up getting reprinted, and it brings the price down, which increases the accessibility of the card to everybody else that wants to play the game. It's really important that those are accessible, especially if they're a necessity for competing in a specific format. Ultimately, when this thing happens in Magic the Gathering, there is a contingent of folks who get really mad. They have some card that's worth $100 or whatever it may be. Maybe they bought extra copies of them because they were speculating that its cost was going to continue to rise. Then the card gets reprinted, the supply is doubled, the price of the card goes way down, and they get upset. But you know who's happy about that? People who weren't yet able to acquire the card. The same thing goes here. There's so many LEGO fans that are huge fans of Captain Rex, watch the Clone Wars, watch Rebels, like myself, really like Rex. The two prior versions of Captain Rex are both quite expensive. You're going to spend upwards of 70, 80, 100, even up to $200 in some cases to acquire these original Rex minifigures. I personally feel like it would have been a huge travesty if Lego had paywalled this new version of Captain Rex behind a $650 set. Because at that point, you're basically telling fans of Captain Rex, hey, unless you have a lot of superfluous income, you're never going to have this minifigure. And I think that's a travesty for a character that's so beloved that has become widely popular and is in multiple different Star Wars media to have a minifigure that is so expensive. So for me, when I saw this minifigure was coming out in a $13 poly bag, I absolutely loved it. I think that is great for Lego on the whole. And when the people who bought the $650 Venator, assuming that their investment was perhaps eventually going to see a return or perhaps even a growth, partly based on the exclusivity of this popular Captain Rex minifigure. These people started complaining about the release of the cheap set. They felt cheated. They felt duped. And really, I got to be honest, inject that into my veins right now. If you're someone out there who is really upset because the price of that minifigure you own has gone down, I don't have a lot of sympathy for you. Now, if you feel upset because you were lied to by Lego and that's, you know, your primary motivation for being mad in this situation... That is understandable to me, but if you're specifically upset because you don't have the opportunity to resell your Rex minifigure for $100 or $200 now because you bought that $650 set, I really am going to find it hard to be upset for you. I think you're going to be okay if you're not able to recoup a third of that cost by reselling a Captain Rex minifigure at an absurd price. I am so happy that now kids, a -foles, all kinds of Lego fans, Star Wars fans that like Captain Rex can now go out 13 bucks, get a hold of this minifigure. Let's be honest too, everyone's going out and buying up these poly bags because of how popular of a figure it is. So the minifigure is probably in the long run still going to end up being a 20 plus dollar minifigure, which is an expensive minifigure. But at the end of the day, a popular character getting a minifigure like this much more accessible to fans where his two previous versions really were not at all. This is a win for LEGO fans. This is an L for a small segment of population of LEGO fans who are trying to use exclusive sets as investment vehicles, but I have a really hard time feeling sympathy for them over sympathy for the average fan who wants to just get access to the minifigures of the characters that they adore. Now, LEGO didn't have to own Gullet. There was no reason for them to write that exclusive text in there. They literally could have just put, this is the first appearance of the new Captain Rex minifigure people still would have been excited. The Venator set itself is still cool. They could have been more honest in their advertising of the minifigure, and it would have created so much less of a problem. 
They really shot themselves in the foot on this one, and they created this controversy by speaking with the language that they used in the instructions and marketing. I honestly have no empathy for people who go out and try to scalp these sets to turn a quick profit because they're not available, and they know that fans out there are going to pay up a little extra to get their hands on them faster. I think this is overall a net negative for the entire LEGO community. If we can all just be reasonable about stuff, and buy what we need for us instead of trying to keep them out of the hands of other fans, then that would be better for the entire community. Can you imagine seeing some 45-year-old going into Walmart, buying up 10 of the Nissan Skyline set, fills his cart, he's rolling out to the checkout, and then, you know, little 10-year-old Timmy that really loves that movie and was a big Paul Walker fan goes over to the shelf to get a copy of the set and uh, that 45 year old guy is checking out with all of them and he can find them on his local Facebook marketplace for $45 tomorrow. That's not good for the Lego community. That is not good for all of us as a whole when things like that are going on. So that is the sole reason why this minifigure right here is so much greater than this minifigure right here because this one costs $13 and this one costs $650. And at the end of the day, all minifigures being accessible to Lego fans and people who are fans of that IP and fans of that character is a win for all of us. I'll see you guys next video. Thanks for checking this one out. I appreciate it. Check out one of the videos here or here. Please subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this content. We'll see you next time.